So our unboxing today is going to be this TP-Link uh, 300 megabits per second Wi-Fi range extender. It's got a two-year warranty. It, uh, this particular model is the TLWA855RE. I'll just throw that on some text on the video so that, so that you know. Um, pretty much just touts that you have one touch setup. This is going to be a 2.4 gigahertz model, so no 5 gigahertz on this guy. Like I said before, to your warranty, this is an extender, so it's going to sort of plug into the wall and sort of <clears throat> extend your current Wi-Fi network a little farther. This is sort of like a Wi-Fi bridge, basically. Well, not a Wi-Fi bridge, I guess, but uh, it basically connects to your network and then um, it also has one one port. Ooh, that's that's very bright. Okay, it's got one port here on the bottom that you can connect a wired device to. That will sort of act as an actual bridge. So we'll uh, we'll crack this bad boy open. There's some uh, film on the top here. You can probably see that. Yum. So. And then in the box here, looks like the box just slides apart maybe. Oh yeah, that's nice. So slide that out. There's our um, there's our box. It's sort of a box within a box. This one's actually pretty rugged. This one's just kind of crappy. So here's our device. It's actually relatively small compared to some of them that I've seen. Uh, we have sort of two antennas that can be positioned any way that you see fit. Got a little protective, protective film. I'll go ahead and peel that off. And uh, it's got this interesting sort of, it's hard to, yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it. I'm going to beam it off the light. It's got this very weird diamond plate shiny thing on the front. It's sort of like, uh, it's actually a bunch of triangles, sort of like a tessellated design on the front. Uh, sides are sort of completely perforated, but there's only actually a small hole here at the bottom. The rest of it, it's it's entirely perforated, but there's only a tiny hole for actual cooling. Uh, on the bottom, we have that Ethernet port I talked about and a reset button. And uh, that's really it. It's got, actually, the only other thing would be this button here, which actually, the button on the front, it's it's kind of cool. It actually follows the tessellated pattern, so this little button for your uh, wireless protected setup, which I guess you'd plug this bad boy into the wall and press that button if you were the kind of person who has wireless protected setup, but I'm not going to address how I feel about that in this video. So here it is. Uh, let's see, other things in the box. If we pop this open, lots of cardboard. Comes with one Ethernet cable. Really, quite beefy one, actually. And then we have your General public license notice, GNU, that's probably for the operating system, probably runs on something similar to TRP or something of that name, TWRP. Uh, here's a little card, it says thank you for purchasing. Uh, should you have any problems, contact TP-Link North America and tell us about your problems. So that's what that says. And then a quick installation guide that tells us if the uh, what, what the explanation of how, how the blinking lights work. Uh, and then, pretty much how to set it up. So, for normal setups, you're just gonna press the WPS button right here on your router and then um, on the device itself. And boom, connected. Uh, for sort of my purposes, I'll be probably using the more advanced setup where you probably yeah, so there's option two, you join the Wi-Fi network that this little guy puts off, and I'll actually put a video, I'll do a video of that. Uh, you join the Wi-Fi network that that thing puts off, and then you log in with the default admin account, which is just admin admin, and, and then you set it up so you actually go and find the wireless network that you really want in your house, and um, point it at that. If I'm going to talk about actually how big this device is, it's, it's actually not bad. Uh, it's 2.4, so to give you an idea, actually, I've got another one right over here that's in use. This guy is, uh, to give you an idea about size, this one is uh, 
2 gigahertz and 5. Um, and this is from ASUS. I believe this is the RPAC 52. So the size isn't really that different um, from this ASUS one that actually does 2 and 5 gigahertz. Although this one gets super hot and um, it also has a nightlight at the bottom. But that being said, it also, you can see that this is a very common thing in these WPS, or these, uh, not WPS, um, these uh, range signal booster things, they seem to all have this weird diamond plate surface on the front, so. But if you want to give a nice size comparison, this is what my ASUS one looks like versus the TP-Link. Obviously this one doesn't have it, like external antennas, but same basic pre premise. So anyway, that's a good size comparison. And that's about it for this, uh, for this little overview. Not a lot else to talk about with these. They're, uh, they're pretty easy. And like I said, we're gonna go through the setup on this guy um, in another video. So stick around for that. And thanks for watching the overview. All right, so uh, here we have the device. And uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to plug this, <laughs> set it up basically. But first we're gonna plug it in. I don't really need to show you how to plug something in, I don't think, but... So... Plug it in. Oh, nice little green light. As you can see, the biggest problem with these devices is that they basically take up the entire outlet. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably pull that off. And still have one outlet in your... in your spectrum, I guess. So that's pretty much it. You plug it into the wall, and then... Um, this thing's gonna beam a wire wireless network that we're going to join. I'm just gonna probably join it on my laptop and sort of go through what it looks like and how to set it up. All right, so now we're at the uh, sort of point in the video where I sort of give you a walkthrough of what we're how to set this up. So we're at my computer now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, connect to this TP-Link. WA55R3, RE rather. This is basically just the wireless network that TP-Link's device broadcasts when it's new and shiny. Um, so when you pull it out of the box, you can do sort of one of two things. You can do wireless protected setup, which I'm not doing, um, or you can follow the instructions where you plug it in, join to the Wi-Fi network, and then um, apparently it's just going to fail over and over and over again. So that's it's pretty cool. I guess I should have these documented so that when we're actually uh, trying to get this stupid thing working, you kind of know. Um, let's see here. Once it's connected, we should be able to go to tplinkrepeater.net. And uh, mine took about three times to connect, so just so you know, might take a bit. So we're connected to that now, and we're opening this up. So it's going to ask for a username and password. That should be in your um, quick start material, but it's admin admin for, um, for a brand new device. You'll probably want to change that, just so you know. And of course, it'll prompt you immediately, which is kind of cool. Uh, I kind of appreciate that, to be honest. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a username here. And um, give it a password. Okay, so it doesn't like spaces. Just so you're aware. So, just so you know, if, if you like to use spaces in your password, this isn't going to let you do that. I just tried, and it said, please enter a valid password. So it doesn't like spaces. But anyway, so once that's done, we're going to basically scan for wireless networks in the proximity. As you can see, this one's a 2.4 gigahertz, I believe. I don't know that it has a 5 gigahertz band. Let me check. It doesn't appear to. Anyway, so no, um, and you can see I have another repeater on the network. Here's all of the other people that are close to 
to me. FBI surveillance fan. That's exciting. Um, jumping jellyfish. Yeah, all these fun folks. Anyway, so we're going to actually just connect to my AP test. And I'm going to give it... Oh, no. Well, I'm going to block out the password in the video when I actually <laughs> put this in there so you won't see mine. But So once you put in your password... Um, you can throw in a host SSID. I'll just do, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to do something like this and then we'll say next and it looks like it's online. So what I should be able to do now <clears throat> is I should be able to go back refresh this a bit maybe for, oh wait I gotta save it first I'm a doofus so then the extender is gonna reboot which basically means that the power lights going to switch from green to red and we'll wait a bit and it should pop back up here in a moment and we should um, be able to connect to the actual test network looks like we're getting there okay I've reconnected to my home network so we can see here, and it looks like we have this test AP TP link, but as you can see, we're still booting, so I'm just going to go ahead and let it. Um, I think it probably is okay by now. We'll see. I think it's going to copy my password across. Yes, it did. So, so it copies the password straight across uh, from the SSID that you connect to initially. Looks like we are all set. I'm going to click that, that I'm connected to the extended network, and click finish. Hopefully, it'll just say, yep, you're good. Congratulations. <clears throat> I don't know that these actually, um, I don't know that these devices will... Some of these aren't really necessarily responsive once you set them up, which is kind of weird, but um, we'll see. Uh, the initial review here is going to be, or well, a quick, just a couple of things I'm going to try to do real quick is I'm just going to try to pull a file across and uh, also going to just do some uh, speed tests from the internet. Since I have Google Fiber, uh, it shouldn't be a bottleneck pretty much at all. So we'll kind of get a good indication of what this thing can do. The box says up to 300 megabits per second. So we will see about that. Um, it is worth noting that usually when you see that, that is total bandwidth. So that would include any overhead that you have on your network, any, um, any of the devices that are already running on it. Typically that's going to be total. So when they say up to 300 megabits per second, that means literally because you have one device that can run at 300 megabits per second. Um, if you have more than one, it's just going to kind of split. So yeah, this thing's just going to tootle along. I don't think it's actually going to do anything here. But what I will do is just go to, just jump to speedtest.net, and we'll see if we can uh, <clears throat> get ourselves a little speed test here. So there's only one device connected to this right now. Good God, there are so many ads. My lordy. That's painful. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and begin test. And uh, we'll see what it does. Hopefully, we get a pretty good, decent, you know, speed. It's hard to say for sure. Um, yeah, it's going to be about where I expected it to be, to be honest. Um, it's going to be about 10 up, or 10 down, and probably about the same up, I would imagine. And uh, this is, for example, the, the access point is actually sitting behind me, and the main wireless um, network in my house is sitting on my desk here behind the laptop. So there's no range issues <laughs> to, to speak of, but uh, yeah, it's not not great. Um, so that's, I mean, that's kind of what you would expect. Um, you could probably plug it in, but yeah, so anyway, so just to, uh, 
just to give us a sort of representative look, if I jump to AP Test 2.4, which is the wireless in my house, and this is just one of the access points I have, um, and we say test again, you can kind of see a little bit better not terribly great I mean it is still 2.4 gigahertz wireless so it's not gonna be spectacular but it's certainly certainly better so that's just to kind of give you a rough idea um, <clears throat> and if I plug this in which I think I will do actually just to show you So, as you can see, there is a little bit of a hit, but like 10 megabits per second on a device isn't so bad for like, a, you know, more or less everything that you, you could think of, I think. Like, you could probably pull off watching a movie on that. It's probably not going to be the greatest in the world, but you can probably do it. Uh, obviously, 21 is a little better, uh, but that's the 2.4 gigahertz network. Uh, the 5 would probably do a lot better, but obviously, this is a 2.4 device, so we're just testing that. Uh, I'm going to actually, I've got a network cable here, so I'm going to plug I'm going to plug a network cable into my laptop here. Alright, oh. oh, so many cords, okay. Alright, so I've plugged in a network cable and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi off, so now you can see my Wi-Fi is off down here in the corner. We'll run a test again from my hard line. And there's a bunch of other activity on the network too, so we're probably not going to see something spectacular, but you'll get to kind of see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much, that's about as much as Ookla can do, I think. And honestly, that's probably about as good as we're going to see just with this laptop. Uh, the poor thing is really just blowing its fan like crazy doing some of this uh, video capture. Typically, I don't use the laptop for these recordings, but um, my desktop doesn't have wireless, and I didn't really want to plug in like a silly little wireless USB um, device because I feel like that would probably affect the test more. So... Anyway, so that's kind of what you'd be expecting. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, block out some of these ads on the screen so you don't have to look at all of them during um, during this video playing back. They're not paying me, so um, screw them. In any case, uh, so that's about it. Uh, the performance is okay, not great, but for this device, I mean, really, I don't know that you can expect much better. And quite frankly, if we look at the price point on it, I mean, let's see, as of today, we're looking at 20 bucks. So $20 for basically 10 megabits per second for a couple devices in like the far reaches of your house, probably not so bad. Um, that being said, I mean, you know, you probably, if you do a lot of video streaming, you probably want something better. You know, there are a lot of stuff in the TP-Link range that are, that's pretty good for this. There's also a fairly good amount of stuff in the... Um, Netgear range that also could work for that and uh, also on top of that probably also uh, like the ASUS one that I have is, is not bad either it does a little bit better so that being said I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you have any further questions or comments let me know if you have anything that you'd really like me to unbox or test give me a shout out let me know so that'll probably do it for uh, for this video. I give this device probably about a three out of five. Um, it's not spectacular, but the and it but it does look good, as as referenced in the first half of this video. And also, it does, you know, it does do a lot of things that you would want in terms of performance for price. So, I mean, not so bad. Really easy to set up, which gives it some plus. But honestly, it's going to be a three out of five for me just because the range is well. The range is kind of meh, and uh, the uh, speed is not great. So, but twenty dollars for uh, 
not having to run a hard line through your house is probably uh, worth it to some of you all. So there you go.